Hey gang, Jack Allaire here. Uh, just uh, doing a quick video because I wanted to get this done, but uh, it's, kids have had snow days, so it's been day after day after day after day of putting it off. It's really late at night, so I'm trying to squeeze it in here uh, before I have to go to bed so that I can get up with them. Oh wait, they don't have school tomorrow. Oh, we've got all night. We don't have to worry about it. This is awesome. So, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but a while ago, uh, my friend's parents were moving and everything was getting out of their house and there was an old Amiga there. And it ended up being, uh, they knew that I loved old games and stuff. So they said, hey, do you want it? And I said, yeah, of course I do, because I <laughs> love that stuff. So I've got some of the booklets here. And first box I opened. Let me see if I can. Yeah, it really doesn't give a lot of light, but so I got two ma two mouses. I got the Mega Mix Master and some cables. This is the main box that has all the stuff in it. And there is a computer way down in there somewhere. But I will be back. I will be back with more uh, once I get everything out. Then we can actually take a look at it. All right, gang, back again. And I've got everything out of the box. I uh, found the keyboard and the disk drive. See the Commodore Amiga on it. Found the modem, which is a 2400 BPS modem. For those of you who have never heard a modem sound, that speed is unimaginable to you. Found the actual unit itself, which is Amiga 2000 HD. The HD probably stands for hard drive, not high definition. And it's got all kinds of plugs in the back. Also found a whole bunch of uh, discs or diskettes. For those of you who don't know what that is, I feel very old. And of course the mouse pad and uh, plugs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hook this up and see if we can get it to fire on. And then I'm going to put everything that I don't need back in the box. Alright, so let's uh, see if we can get it going. Alright, so this may be the most convoluted thing I've ever done or seen, but I've got the Amiga running through an HD capture card over there somewhere and actually you know, onto my Mac. So. But it's looking for Amiga Workbench. So... Now I have to figure out where to go from here. I'm hoping that the books will help out. Working, I'll probably take a little bit more video as I get things going. And uh, I'm also going to do, this weekend, I'll do the pickups videos uh, for all the games. So that, that way you guys can see what games I have. And then depending on what you guys want to see and what I feel like playing, uh, we'll meet in the middle there somewhere, and I'll play some of the games. I'll end up playing all of them, but just uh, to see which ones make for good video. Well, uh, thank you very much for watching, and as always, play on! Hey gang, Jack Allaire here, uh, back again. Uh, going to be the last part of the video for tonight. Uh, I have uh, done a bunch of research found very little online, oddly enough, uh, the, the, or I should say in video form. The Amiga 2000 and, and all the Amigas have a large following, but all of, a lot of it is in uh, languages that I don't speak. So I found things in German and Italian, and uh, apparently Amiga was just not that big over here. Okay, so we've got the system here. It's running. I've got the the workbench 1.3 disc in there 
so we can see that. I've got a stack of discs here that are all blank. I've got these which show, let me see if I can get it to show the error there. See, now it's working. Made a liar out of me. A little while ago, these were giving a, uh, I want to say it was a DF2 error. But now they're all working just fine. Oh, error valid, redating disk. Yeah, those, there, there we go. That's what I was getting. And then when I would retry, Polarity would ensue. Hang on, gotta find the right mouse. I'm gonna retry. And now it thinks it's just an empty disk. Okay, great. <clears throat> I have not been able to access the hard drive, so I'm gonna figure out how to do that. Uh, I did actually get a game working though. So, uh, oh, and also I've gotta figure out how to do do, apparently I need a converter to convert the normal output from the the Amiga to uh, something that the, the, the monitors that I have will like. But I'll do some more playing around. Uh, do you want to show you real quick uh, just the, the dumb little game I got working? Amy Putt Golf and what was it before? Oh, it was something else before. Double-sided reorder. There's also a, a, a criminal one. This just makes me sad. And it is actually empty. Well, it's not empty, it's got something else in it. There we go. Okay. Now I've got a read write error. That's, nope, wrong mouse. Let's see if we can actually get it to come up. Oh. Alright, I had it working on Workbench 1.2, but now I'm on 1.3, so I don't know if that's going to cause a problem. Um, probably will, though, knowing the. Uh, my luck, but uh, so that's it for now. I will be doing more videos of this along the way because I feel that there needs to be some documentation in video form out there somewhere. Even though I'm pretty sure everybody who is into it just thinks, well, everybody knows you put workbench disc in. Like when I turn it on, it just says workbench. I'm like, I don't, I don't know where that is. But I found the workbench disc, popped it in, and it works. But right now, that's having a read write error. And uh, so this weekend we will go over the games. Uh, until then, thank you very much for watching, and as always, play on. All right. Well, uh, the as soon as I stopped, it decided to start working. So this is the Amy Putt Classics, and I don't know if it's actually going to work. Oh, it is. Okay. So this is a. Uh, Pop up game, you place the ball and then you hit the ball. And yeah, it's it's a mini pop-up game. Ta-da! Then you go to number two. So there, a uh, preview of the games. Uh, this one was just kind of in the... Maybe. Uh, this one was just kind of sitting in there. So 